Hi, welcome to Community Matters. Um, this is hosted by Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, my name is Mac Blanchard. I'll be the host here today, along with uh, Colin and Austin. They're here with the uh, law school here in Manoa. Um, and we have Aki Marceau here, um, who's with HECO as the director of the electrification of transportation. Um, I'm gonna let Austin take over to give a little introduction um, about Aki. Thank you, Mac. Um, so just a little introduction to Aki Marceau. Um, she received her BA from Haverford College in Growth and Structure of Cities, then went on to receive her Master's of Regional Planning degree from Cornell University. After graduation, worked at Parsons Brinkerhoff and supported the Hart Transportation and Environmental Planning Team with planning analysis. Aki then worked for the city and county of Honolulu as the Land Use and Sustainability Manager, where she again worked with planning for the Honolulu Rail, among other responsibilities. Prior to her current position, Aki Marceau was the Managing Director of Policy and Community at Elemental Accelerator. And now Aki is the Director of Electrification of Transportation for HECO and serves on the City and County of Honolulu Planning Commission. Um, and then a little background about us by Colin. Thank you, Austin. Um, so Austin Mack and I are law students at the William S. Richardson School of Law here in Manoa. And we're all currently working together on a project for Professor, Professor Richard Walsgrove's Clean Energy Law and Policy course regarding the electric, electrification of the transportation sector here in Hawaii. We are all very excited to have the opportunity to interview Ms. Marceau, someone who has extensive experience in the field here in Hawaii. And we want to give a big thanks to Think Tech Hawaii for bringing us all together. We're hoping that this interview will help inform the public about ongoing issues here in Hawaii related to clean energy and specifically re related to electrifying the transportation sector. All right, I think with that, we can kind of start diving into the main questions. Aki, again, big thanks for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, the first question we have is, do you mind just telling us about the role of the Director of Electrification and Transportation, kind of what your duties are, maybe a little bit of the history background that role is with HECO? Sure, thank you. And um, thanks so much for ha inviting me to the show. This is my first time on Think Tech Hawaii. So really, really excited to be here. Um, it sounds like you're in a pretty uh, exciting and informative class as well by Professor Walsgrove. Um, so happy to share a little bit more about the Director of Electrification of Transportation position at Hawaiian Electric. It's a little bit of a mouthful. So in some future state, I'd like to change the title to something that rolls off the tongue a little bit better. <laughs> um, the, that specific role in, has only been around for a few years. So I'm essentially the third person to have this role. It was previously held by um, actually the Dean of the Engineering School at, at University of Hawaii at Manoa, Brennan, Professor Brennan Morioka. Um, and then we had an interim director position and then, and then I joined. Um, and it's, it kind of grew from this opportunity that the utility sector was seeing. And I think that the, the community and nationally and globally, we were seeing that there's this huge market opportunity and huge um, kind of commercial opportunity to provide services for electric vehicles. And so that can be, you know, class one vehicles like sedans and SUVs, and it can also be, you know, trucks and even public buses or, or tour buses and that type of thing. And so we're seeing this huge emergence of these new vehicle types that use electricity as their fuel source. And um, initially this was kind of a program that was incubated within the company. And once there was kind of enough traction, it spun out of that incubation state stage and joined um, the overall department, which is what I'm part of, which is called business development and strategic planning. And so that's where the electrification of transportation um, group, we're about eight people now, that's where we all sit. And um, I can share a little bit about, you know, some of the programs that we're running, if that's helpful, or, or if you have other questions, um, I can dive into that as well. No, that'd be great to hear about some of the programs, it'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So right now, uh, we have one primary program, and that is our public charging network. And so what we found was that one of the biggest barriers to people purchasing and using electric vehicles was that there was this concept of range anxiety. And so they were worried that they would drive a car. And then, you know, after maybe going from 
downtown Honolulu to Haleiwa, they would be worried that they wouldn't be able to charge their car and they would run out of juice. And so we found that one solution to that is essentially developing something called a public charging network, which is essentially fast chargers that can charge your car within 15 to 20 minutes, um, strategically located throughout the state to ensure that there was enough reliability and certainty for those who are driving to be able to get to where they need to go. Um, so that's one of the programs that we're running and we have about, we have permission to develop 25 fast chargers um, or superchargers, I don't know what you wanna call them, but these are, these are the DC fast chargers or level two chargers that can essentially charge your car within 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and so we, we operate those across our five island service territory. Um, another kind of, I guess, lever that we have or program that we can offer is um, uh, rate, rate structure, specific rates specifically for electric vehicle charging. And the benefit of having specific rates is, um, I think as, as many of you know, right now we're producing and we're planning to continue to produce a lot of energy in the middle of the day through our renewable energy projects like um, solar and wind and those types of programs. And so we're, we're trying to operationally increase the integration of renewable energy into our grid. And one way to do that is by um, offering uh, charging opportunities that are financially and I guess feasible and market driven in the middle of the day. And so we try and lower the cost of charging in the middle of the day and obviously, I think this goes without saying, we're trying to make it competitive with the price of gasoline too, because that's really important um, from the consumer's perspective to make sure that it's um, not only operationally cheaper, but also cheaper to charge or fuel your car. So I'm gonna jump in if that's okay. Thank you, Aki. Um, thank you for sharing that. What are, what are some maybe next steps that HECO is seeking out um, in this electrification of transportation? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. So a few years ago, we uh, developed a document called the Electrification of Transportation Roadmap. And it was this very kind of higher level document, but it really showed, you know, that there is a position for the utility to be playing in this space. And that there's a number of different initiatives that we can focus on. Since then, we've really tried to focus on these, these two initiatives. So the DC fast charging program and the rate design. But one of the biggest programs that I'm probably most excited about is something called our rate our um, make ready program. And essentially, uh, when you're thinking about putting in infrastructure for charging, there's kind of three things that one needs to think about. So the purchase of the vehicle, which is obvious, the purchase of the uh, charging station, so the thing that's charging the, the vehicle, and then there's all the infrastructure needed to support the charging station and make sure there's enough power supply and all of those things. And, um, and so it's slightly different than say, you know, buying a, a standard, you know, gasoline vehicle in the sense that um, you also need to develop the infrastructure to, to service it and to charge it. And so the make ready program allows the utility and we specialize in, you know, utility infrastructure development. So it allows the utility to provide all of that infrastructure for our customers up until the charging stations. And then the, the, the customer themselves, they have the opportunity to choose whatever charging station really serves their needs and serves their vehicle and that type of thing. And so we're in the process of filing um, one proposal to the Public Utilities Commission for our what we're calling a commercial make ready program. And that includes different customer segments. So multi-unit dwellings, um, uh, workplace charging, uh, any kind of uh, commercial customer that has fleets of vehicles um, and that type of thing. And then we also have already filed a make ready program specifically for buses. And um, you, you shared a little bit about my background in, in transit and urban planning. And so I'm really excited about that bus make ready program because I think that's a huge opportunity for the community uh, to have an electric bus fleet. And so if we can help support, accelerate that process, um, that's what we're, we're hoping to, to do.
I actually, I, there's one other thing that I would add that I'm really excited about as well, which is, so all of these programs right now, they're in the form of a pilot. And part of the reason for piloting these programs is because we're in a field in which the technology and the processes and the opportunities are changing quite, quite rapidly. So it's a growing and evolving field. And so we don't want to get stuck in a certain process and, and um, devote you know, a massive amount of capital to something that is going to change and perhaps be outdated anyway in a few, few years or so. And so what we're trying to do is pilot, learn from the pilots, and then scale. Um, one of the opportunities that we had earlier this year is to propose something called an innovation pilot framework. And that's something that the commission is currently reviewing. And it would allow us as the utility to pilot things a lot quicker. So right now it's a pretty extensive regulatory process, you know, and it's pretty similar whether it's like a hundred million dollar project or a $5 million project, you know, it, it, it's the same process, more or less. And we're finding that that might not make a lot of sense moving forward for especially in these sectors that are rapidly evolving. Um, and it's very rare, I think, in the, the normal everyday world, where you hear something from a customer, and they say, you know, I'm really interested in this thing. And then you say, Okay, I hear you, I'll get back to you in three years <laughs> with a proposal. And so this will allow us to actually respond a lot quicker to what we're hearing from our customers and kind of be a little bit more nimble and and, um, and evolve faster. So I'm, I'm very excited about that one as well. Austin, I think we have a question. I know we've already talked a little bit about some of the steps that um, HECO has taken as far as the um, charging stations have gone. Um, but are there any other further steps? I mean, you're talking about scaling down the road. Are there any other um, kind of issues or problems or things you can kind of provide on that? Yeah, so right now um, we have the opportunity, it, actually we have the opportunity to install 29 charging stations and we've installed about um, 20 plus or minus. We have a few in the pipeline right now. So hoping to get a few in by the end of the year. Uh, I really like to make that a permanent program so we can really build out what we call the the backbone of charging um, and that would allow us to just make it easy to uh, find charging when you need to find it and also operationally what we're hoping for is that it's something that we can um, you know it needs to be as reliable as as a gas station essentially, right? Um, so we wanna make sure that they're not broken down, that they're serviced really um, well, that they're very reliable uh, and user-friendly, people know where they are, that type of thing. And we found, we did an analysis and we created a tool called the uh, Backbone Tool, which looked at, you know, where our projections of electric vehicle usage are and how much charging infrastructure is needed to really service that quantity of vehicles or that quantity of usage and charging needs. And we find that there's actually a seven X, we, we need seven times the amount of charging in, in the public universe. Um, that's not including what we call the private universe, which is you know people who have charging at home or in their condominiums and that type of thing. Uh, so, so I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there. And, and there's actually some you know, opportunity for everyone to really play a role. Um, we, we certainly do not have enough available uh, right now. And I think there's, there's certainly enough you know, demand needed to build out more, more infrastructure, um, both on the level two and fast charger scale. Um, and then, I mean, we're even seeing things like um, a need for charging hubs, for example. And so instead of right now, we just have like one or, you know, max two DC fast chargers available. But what we're, what we're seeing is, you know, some of our partners at Tesla and Electrify America, um, they're deploying the Volkswagen settlement funds. 
they're actually looking at charging hubs to see, you know, where can we provide clusters of charging? So there is that reliability and there's not that, you know, you don't go to a charging station, there's not a queue of people just like waiting to charge. And so that's, I think, something that we can certainly do as well. Um, on the bus operation perspective, there might be an opportunity to do something that's called on-route char char charging, which is basically instead of having the charging available just at the bus depots, providing it in places that are kind of essentially like in the middle of a route, if they're you know, if they have a layover spot or something like that, um, and that would allow bus operators to charge essentially midstream if they need to, so they don't have to complete the route um, in order to get back to the, the charging hub. Um, and so as you can see, there's a lot of kind of operational needs um, that need to be thought about when also developing this infrastructure. And we require systems in which we get feedback from our customers and from the entities that are really interested in, you know, just deploying this type of um, infrastructure and, and, and making this transition. Um, you briefly just mentioned about how, um, you know, you were involved working with Tesla, um, some kind of partnerships there, um, but I kind of want to touch upon some of the nonprofit aspects of this. I know you we briefly touched upon how you were with Elemental Accelerator, um, which is an accelerator program for nonprofits, um, and specifically with kind of clean energy ideas. So what kind of role does nonprofits have and how do they work with um, your, no, your role and with Hawaiian Electric here? Yeah, so Elemental Accelerator is a nonprofit itself, and it actually is an accelerator for startups, which are for profit. So I just wanted to clarify there. Um, but I, you know, even what we what we saw at when I what I saw when I was at Elemental Accelerator is that a lot of these challenges, there's a technical aspect for for sure, but they're really systems challenges. And so in order to change or evolves or creates systems change, there's a, a number of different levers that one can um, press on, I guess. And so, you know, if you were to, and, and you shared a little bit about my, my background, I've been essentially chipping away at the same problem my entire career, which is how might we create a more livable community? How might we create a community that has a, you know, decarbonized transportation system? How might we create a better transportation network so we can really live, work, and play? And those are the things I, I mean, I just think about that all the time. It, it, I think it comes from being a, an urban planner and kind of being trained in that, that, um, that subject. So, so the utility plays one, one role, and I think I talked about that. There's infrastructure and charging um, and then also rate design. And so there, those are kind of three levers that the utility can play in transitioning our transportation sector to a more um, carbon free model. And then there's a number of different things that, that nonprofits can do. Um, we at Hawaiian Electric work really closely with a number of different players on the for profit and the nonprofit side. Uh, one organization that we help co-develop is called Drive Electric Hawaii. And that's really a consortium or, or a coalition of different players in government, in the nonprofit sector, um, and in the for-profit sector as well, that are really committed to transitioning our transportation sector to an electrified version. Um, we're also a member of the Sustainable Transportation Coalition of Hawaii, which is a program that Blue Planet Foundation, a local nonprofit, runs. And that's part of a nationwide group called the U.S. Clean Cities Coalition. And so they're looking at the entire kind of clean transportation network at large and information sharing across these regions. Um, and then recently in developing our make ready programs and our commercial rates and, and those types of things, um, sharing our backbone tool, we've been, you know, COVID makes it difficult to do community engagement because we're so dispersed. But actually, I guess one of the silver linings is that we can do remote community engagement and actually 
get rid of that kind of geographic divide that separates some of us and makes it harder to engage. And so we, we recently led a series of webinars called Drive Electric Dialogues. And we showcased a number of our partners from University of Hawaii, the city and county of Honolulu, um, you know, Tesla, Electrify America, a number of different folks. And we're really trying to express that this is going to take everyone to achieve. And we're all going to need to work together in order to do this. And there's, there's really enough, I mean, there's more than enough work to go around. Um, and so that's one way in which we're really trying to kind of coordinate and work together with our, um, you know, nonprofit partners, for-profit partners, and that type of thing. Thank you for that, Ms. Marceau. Um, as somebody who drives an electric car and doesn't always plan out his driving, I've, I've been very grateful for the for HECO's push and the private sector's push for uh, widespread charging infrastructure. Um, so the next question we want to ask you is uh, whether or not you know of initiatives or ideas in in other states that you believe would be beneficial here in Hawaii and that are also feasible here in Hawaii? Yeah, there, I mean, there, <laughs> there's a lot going on. So one of the things that um, you'll see in other states, especially, I mean, New York State um, and in California, they've really, I mean, they're really all in on transitioning their, their transportation network to an electrified version, I guess. Uh, and so I'd, I'd love to, I mean, just kind of at a broader level, I'd love to see and um, I'd love to kind of develop more, more, I guess, buy-in that, okay, this is the future of, of transportation. This is the direction that everything is going. And we're past like the incubation stage. We're really trying to commercialize these efforts now. Um, and so I've been, I've been really impressed by how kind of supportive those regions have been in and how committed they've been in moving this forward. Um, and I think, you know, I, on, on a more like micro level, there's a number of different programs that I find interesting. And, and so if we, can, if we can get to a place where we can do more innovative pilots relatively quickly, you know, some of the initiatives that I'm looking at and that I'm interested in are, um, you know, there's there's something called subscription pricing. And so it's a for a residential customer and saying, instead of saying, okay, this is um, this is your utility bill, this is the rate that you're on. Um, this would say, okay, this is the utility bill, this is the rate that you're on. If you buy an electric vehicle, you know, you can pay an extra, let's just say, I'm just throwing out numbers, like $30. And that'll essentially be, you know, the additional cost, similar to a cell phone plan you know, up to a certain kilowatt hour amount. And so that's something that to me, it's interesting because it's really easy for the customer to understand. You don't need to become an expert in like rate design <laughs> to understand what that means for you. And it's also a way to really engage with our residential customers because, you know, that's where a lot of people are, are charging. So that's something that um, I'm seeing kind of pilots happening throughout the country. And, and I'm, I'm really interested in learning more. Uh, another area that I'm interested in learning more is um, there's a number of different customers or sorry utilities that are looking at fleet advisory services and I think that's definitely a role that we can play because um, you know we are meeting with our, our fleet customers quite regularly and and sometimes there's a little bit of um, paralysis where it feels like, oh gosh, I need to convert my fleet right now, <laughs> you know? And actually this is something that we at Hawaiian Electric have done, which is we've set a fleet electrification goal of 100% clean fleets by 2035 for our class one vehicles, which is our um, sedans and SUVs and light trucks. And the way that we've done that is we've mapped out, okay, when are we retiring vehicles organically and at what point do we need to replace these? So we've essentially mapped out and planned for what that fleet replacement cycle looks like. And I think that's something that we can help other customers do as well. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of entities that can help help with that. Thank you. Uh, very interesting. Um, the next question is, how is HECO engaging with, the, with public stakeholders in the community in HECO's decision-making process when you're talking about all these initiatives and, and pilot projects? Um, and how is HECO incorporating the public's feedback in the push for this electrification of transportation sector? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And I think my most 
you know, current example is really those drive electric dialogues. And so we're trying to, to the best of our ability, make those as interactive as possible and also bring in um, the folks that are, are really doing the heavy lifting too. So for example, at our last drive electric dialogue, we had the city and county of Honolulu Office of Climate Change speak and, you know, they talked about their fleet electrification plans and programs. And they're doing an enormous amount of really excellent work um, thinking about uh, their, their transition process. Um, similarly, we worked with Hawaii Energy um, and they have a, a rebate program for EV chargers, so level two and DC fast chargers. And we're, um, you know, trying to showcase the work that they're doing and then, but also kind of line up all of these players to the public at large and really, um, you know, show that, show who the different players are, what we're doing and really try and see how we can be additive to the process, not necessarily always duplicative or, you know, hopefully not, you know, having negative value <laughs> to what's going on. Um, I think, you know, personally within our program, we're trying to make everything that we do as transparent as possible. So all the videos that we, um, webinars that we have, we post online, we usually send out a feedback form, you know, to get solicit input. Um, I mean, the way I see it is these customers are really trying to advance and serve our customers in the community. So it behooves us to actually get feedback from them in order to make it better. And, and really our programs can, can be as only as good as the feedback that we get. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm always interested in, in creating processes that allow for and harvest those ideas from the community. I mean, that, that would make, that makes our program so much better from the get-go. Thank you for that. And I think that we just have, uh, just about a minute left. So any, anything anybody else wants to ask before we wrap up? I actually did have one question. Aki, if you could, um, what's a, what do you think is a, a great way to spread this knowledge that you were just touching up on, um, I guess, to the masses of Hawaii is, you know, getting this knowledge out there so that everyone is um, familiar with EVs. So. Sure. I, I, act, I know this sounds really kind of like low hanging fruit, but I think word of mouth is really helpful. People tend to do what their friends are doing and what their neighbors are doing. And so if, if you drive an electric car, then maybe your mom is more likely to drive a, an electric car. Your friends are more likely to do it. And I think, you know, they, they've done, you know, so many studies around behavioral change, change and that type of thing. And it's always kind of that, that recommendation or, you know, that, that personal connection that allows people to kind of start to make that transition. So I think really talking about the decisions that you've made, how, how great it is to own an electric car <laughs> um, would, would, be, would be great. I mean, for me, one of the things that I did is I actually bought my car used and I found that, that was, that's not talked about very often. And there's actually a really great, you know, kind of gently used market for electric vehicles that's much, much less expensive than, you know, buying a car new. Um, and, and it's a 2018. I mean, it feels like a new car. My last car was a 2007 <laughs> Nissan Versa. So it feels like a massive upgrade. Um, and, and I think that is something that, you know, for, for parents, if they're thinking about, you know, what their kids could be driving, why not get them an electric vehicle or why not have them pitch in for an electric vehicle, um, just operationally. And I think environmentally and, and in every way it, it, it's a, it's a great choice. And I think just the more we talk about it, the better. Well, Aki, thank you so much again for coming. I think we're, we're all out of time, but you know, we greatly appreciate it. And I hope our viewers have um, took away from, you know, a lot of this information and some really great stuff. Um, again, this is Community Matters with Think Tech Hawaii. Um, really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.